Our second speaker comes along with the professional title, Master Jammer. How cool is that? Well, it seems that you get that kind of title by being a lifelong culinary adventurer and social entrepreneur who jams herself between a career in mental health and addiction and her business of bringing heritage food skills like canning and fermenting to the masses via her, co her company, Preserve Food Skills. Please welcome to the PKN stage, Jessica Matthews Brigada. I'm Jess, and I make jam. Um, I was asked to speak, and my mind started racing about all of the beautiful metaphors in jam. But then I realized that real, honest jam so often just gets sidelined. Other than peanut butter, like where's jam's iconic place in this world? So I'm here to break down the world of jam for you today, and hopefully leaving you empowered to go out and explore the rich world of jam. So my love affair started here, freezer jam. It's kind of normal, less sugar, but frozen. You're not gonna find it in the supermarket because once it thaws, it's, like I said, normal. But it's frosty magic. It's one kind of jam. But first, I wanna dig into a little bit of a short history. So recipes for fruit preserves started um, in antiquity with the original epicure, Marcus Gavius Apicius, uh, in the first century AD. The first European sugar preserves made use of that seemingly magical substance, honey. The earliest fruit preserves would be made by mixing fruit pulp with honey and allowing it to dry in the sun, creating a texture more of like a jellied sweet. And jam, as we know, it only seems to have emerged in the 19th century uh, when a cheaper and reliable source of sugar was made available in the West Indies. Before the sugar was considered a spice and only the richest in Europe could afford it. Uh, with cheaper sugar combined with knowledge uh, acquired during Napoleon's wars, uh, jam was set to hit every table. So what is this modern jam all about? First, the four essential ingredients that make up any jam. Fruit, sugar, pectin, and heat. Each one plays a key role in defining the flavor, texture, and general characteristic of a great jar of jam. And pretty much any fruit can be made into jam, sometimes even not fruit. Bacon jam, anyone? <laughs> great flavor to start with is essential. And you get this by getting fruit that's grown in season, has a low water content, high acidity or added lemon, and not too many pits. Insert appropriate curses for your Nanking cherries here. Fruit is high in acid, which makes it safe against botulism, but be careful not to stray from that high acid recipe or you could be in trouble. And speaking of trouble, there's two things I refer to as the white death. One is a winter in Calgary and the other is sugar. <laughs> but if you wanna live in the perpetual excitement of boom and bust or want a delicious jam, you need to embrace the white death. Sugar adds the obvious sweetness associated with jam, but also inhibits molds after jars are open and absorbs water so pectin can work. Pectin is the stuff that makes jam gel up. It gets added during the cooking process of jam and reacts with acids and sugars to form molecular bonds that gives jam its classic gelled texture. You can get it in packages, or you can rely on things like green apples or citrus uh, rinds to do the job naturally. Pectin's a bit of the Goldilocks of jam ingredients. It doesn't like too much water, not enough sugar, too much sugar, not enough heat, too much heat. Uh, it's needed, but you have to kind of learn how to coddle it a little bit like Kanye West, or you're gonna end up with jam that you can either pour or slice with a knife. Uh, it only makes up up to 1% of your jam, but it plays a pretty critical role. Next thing is boiling, uh, which helps reduce the water content, in turn helping to connect the pectin molecules. When jam is boiling, it goes through a setting process not unlike candy making. To check and see if you've boiled it long enough, a common trick is to put a dab of jam on a plate and into the freezer. If the surface holds and wrinkles when you take it out after five minutes, you can stop boiling it. So you get it. Jam is simple, but complex, but simple, but complex. But you don't wanna just know that, you wanna enjoy a jar of jam with confidence, with class, with knowing what the hell confiture is, and is that really a jam? I introduce you to the extended family of jam. Sweet, mashed up fruit with a slightly gelled, spreadable texture. Jam is the ultimate people pleaser. She's a little bit of everything for everyone and doesn't discriminate between bread, a bowl of ice cream, a jam teeny, or a platter of cheeses. Dress her up and she'll go anywhere, but at the end of the day, she's happy to get down with some peanut butter and toast. Spoon Fruits remembers another era when preserves were made from sugar too precious to spread thickly on toast. 
Instead, they were eaten as spoon sweets, with feasts being capped off with delicate silver spoons laden with fruit preserves. While I personally discovered the joys of spoon fruits in Greece, you may also find such treats with a glass of cooling water in the Middle East and Eastern Europe. You know that girl with the impossibly perfect skin that you love to hate? <laughs> Let me introduce you to jelly. Jelly is made of only clear fruit juice, lots of white sugar, and possibly some pectin. She's classic, beautiful, and if she weren't already so heavenly scented, she'd be wearing Chanel number no. five. No whole fruit for this girl. She's far too refined for that. And so Jan went out on a wild night, and a few months down the road, Conserve showed up as the middle child always mixed up with someone else. Conserve, preserve. Wait, aren't you supposed to be with the pickles? Hold on, chutney. No, that's not it. Or is it? Ch Conserve might also have identity crisis, but he knows that deep down he's a proud, chunky mix of different fruits. Marmalade is thought to be created in 1561 by the physician to Mary, Queen of Scots, when he mixed orange and crushed sugar to keep her sickness at bay. It's been suggested, in fact, that the word marmalade derives from the word Marie et malade, but is far more likely to be from the Portuguese word marmelo for quince. Either way, you either love or hate that guy. Personally, it's a bad guy I'm all about. Was your mom's name Lemon? Before she had marmalade, did she hang out in the fridge by the eggs and the butter? Curd, like, sp curd spreads like jam, fills donuts like jam, and is so sweet and tangy like marmalade, there's an obvious family resemblance. But curd lives in the fridge because this side of the family is made up of eggs and butter, and they're just too low acid to end up in a canning jar. One's smooth, one's chunky. No, not peanut butter. These jammy fruit sauces started the same, but compote asserts his chunky, stewed fruit authentic self. While coolie tends to smooth out her lumps in a blender, chinois till she's silky and saucy. They tend to hang around dinner tables a lot and often end up either dressing up a main dish or a dessert. No added pectin, maybe no added sugar, and definitely no gel. This one's a bit thick because it's felt the heat for quite some time. Long enough, in fact, the, for the moisture to evaporate enough so the final product is spreadable instead of runny. Fruit butter's an old chap hanging around since the old days at Smucker's Cider Mill in 1897. He likes to keep things simple but prides himself on his wholesome goodness. So next time there's jam in your life, remember, jam and family are some of the best to have around. You want them there to help tell stories at dinner, to get through your breakfast crunch, to fill out the flavors of your life. So summer persnickety, they're also one of the most forgiving families in the land of preserves. Don't be shy, make some jam. <laughs>